Cinema 4D supports a huge variety of file formats, many of which are 3D file formats, which means you can use the application to do your rendering and your animation for any model that you made in pretty much any app out there. So we're talking SketchUp, Vectorworks, AutoCAD, Pro Engineer, SolidWorks, and the list just goes on and on and on. Um, what file formats does Cinema 4D support? Well, you can have a look in the Preferences for yourself, which you just go Edit, Preferences, Shortcuts, Control-E. And then on the Import Export page here, just unfold that, and you can see everything that's supported. So very popular ones are 3D Studio, so that's dot 3DS. That works really well because it also allows textures to come over. Uh, DWG, DXF, FBX, just going through some of the interesting ones here. Illustrator, STL, VRML, it's very popular. Uh, Vectorworks, Archicad, uh, Wavefront, which is the OBJ format. All of those ones you can bring into Cinema 4D. So chances are, if you've got another 3D app and you want to bring it into Cinema 4D, shouldn't be a problem so long as you can export as one of those file formats. Okay, so what I've got here is a model that's actually come from SketchUp. And to come from SketchUp, I've exported as 3DS format. And the particular model here, I've then stripped out the materials because I want to show you some potential problems you may run into and how you fix them. Depending on how good the export is from the application you're coming from, you may see certain problems on the polygon mesh that comes over, particularly on curved surfaces. So this is like a stage that was built in SketchUp. Some little cutout shapes on there of people as well, just to give an impression. Of course, I could replace those with proper 3D people if I wanted inside Cinema 4D, apply some more materials and stuff. But there are certain things that are good, certain things that haven't come over so good. So if I zoom in a little bit for you, and I'm just going to look at the stage here and you can see the stairs are fine, the cutout people are fine but look at that plinth, that's looking a bit scary, that's all faceted which is obviously not what I want and these stairs are not looking good either. Now fortunately Cinema 4D has some very useful tools to fix certain things such as this of course you could remodel these parts if you wanted but it's quicker to fix the model so let's do that. So I've pulled out the bits in here of things that I just want to have a quick look at, a couple of which are this plinth thing here. So there's the plinth itself. And to fix things, what you want to look at are the polygons themselves. So that's what makes this 3D object up. So like little polygons. And if you choose the use polygon tool, which is this one, you can then select the polygons here. So they'll turn into like a little blue cage and each thing you click on are the polygons. Now the tools that can clean things up are as follows. First of all, select all the polygons you want to clean up, so Control A in the main viewport, and then right click, and then you get your whole list of polygon editing tools, of which there are many, but the ones you want to look at that can fix things quite often for things that you've imported in are untriangulate, which will get rid of any triangles. Triangles can generally cause a few problems, quadrangles are much better. So we'll try that one first. And untriangulate, we'll get rid of these triangles that we, we can see here and may well improve the mesh. Depends on the model, uh, the object rather, to see whether it will or won't. So we'll try that first, untriangulate. It's got rid of all the triangles. The flow's better, which would make it easier to edit if I wanted to add anything to this model. But let's just do a quick render. Still faceted. Okay, so what else can we try? The very useful tool for this is optimized because what might be causing these facets is basically polygons where there shouldn't be polygons or points too close together. Um, so we can use a tool called Optimize to check this. So if we right click again and go down to Optimize, uh, again you can use the default settings in here. Basically what it's looking for are any polygons too close together, any points that aren't unused or used uh, uh, too close together. Uh, and you can set a tolerance value to what extent it should do this to. So here, 0 0.01 meters is going to look for anything really close together which would cause this faceting issue. Click OK. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but straight away that improves. So I'll just zoom in a bit so you can see a bit better. Render. Bang. Look at the difference between that and the top. So let's do the same thing on the top. Just fix the top because it's very easy once you've gone through it once. I'll just do it fast for you. So we go down to tri uh, untriangulate. OK. <laughs> And then we do the same thing with the optimize, and we go OK, fixed. That's how fast it is when you know what you're doing. Sometimes there's a slightly more complicated problem, which I want to show you down here with the stairs. And if I render that, you'll see the problem. Same sort of issue here, we've got this faceting. So let's try the first fix that we had, see whether that gets rid of it. So we'll grab all of those, we'll go down to untriangulate, we'll go OK. 
and then we'll do the optimize Oops. okay and that's improved things flows better but if we render not quite there these aren't quite smooth enough so can we control anything about that yes we can is the good news so particularly this bottom one is looking real bad so I'm just going to change the angle just so you can see that a bit better hopefully you can see that there's this kind of faceting so what can we do about that so we've done our two fixes and that's still not done it does it on certain ones like this top one's looking okay but this one's looking horrible the great tool we've got to help with this is if you choose selection first of all we want to select the polygons we want to improve and for that we can use loop selection just change the angle and loop if you put on sort of the edge of a polygon it'll loop around those polygons and the highlighting mode will show you what you're looping around so in this case I want that so I'm choosing the edge of a polygon here I'll just click on it and now those are orange and then I'm going to do this one as well um, which so I just hold down shift and then I can choose that one and I'll do this top one as well and let's do those so to fix them what you do is you right click and in here you want to go and find subdivide but the mode you want in subdivide, not what a subdivide will do is subdivide a polygon into um, more polygons basically one two three you can do it as many times as you want but the very clever mode is hyperurb subdivide which will take into account kind of the flow of the polygon so as it's going around a, a circular stairwell I'll try and keep that shape as it subdivides so we'll do hyperurb subdivide for that and we'll check, make sure the maximum angle is no more than 90 degrees here I've got it set to 89 degrees click OK and you see now I've got more polygons and it's around the shape and if I render that smooth 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 which is exactly what we want of course you can up the subdivide as much as you want but compare that if I zoom out to the outer one and look at the difference and that is basically how you fix the